Yes, thank you, ma'am. Sri Anike Premchandran ji. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, for affording me this opportunity to take part in the discussion. Madam, it is really a proud and prestigious moment to all Indians. On 23rd of August 2023, in the history making soft landing of Chandrayaan 3 in the moon's south pole. Madam, we salute the Indian scientific community, in particular ISRO, for having achieved this historic success in space technology. Madam Chairperson, me, 13 scientists, including the chairman of ISRO, they are the former students of the TKM College of Engineering, wherein my constituency is there. 13 scientists who are part of the mission, including the chairman, Mr. S. Somnath, each from the TKM College of Engineering, a well-reputed, prestigious college in the state of Kerala in my constituency. And that, that is being installed, that is being instituted by a learned person, Sri Tangal Kunj Muslia, in the year 1955. Madam Chairperson, when Chandrayaan-3 successfully landed on the moon, 1.4 billion people of India was in full joy and triumph in its making history. Through this landmark achievement, India's space agency ISRO became the first place, first space mission in the world to land near the south pole of the moon. Madam Chairperson, the remarkable achievement of ISRO not only underscores the powers of Indian scientists, but also highlights the extraordinary journey of scientific development that India embarked upon since the establishment of ISRO in the year 1962. Further, it showcased India's technological capabilities and its visionary approach towards leveraging science and technology to address various other areas of development. Our moon mission is always having a human-centric approach. That is why immediately after the launching, of the, immediately after the landing, soft landing, Honorable Prime Minister has said, this success belongs to all humanity not to any individual or not to a particular community or a country. Madam, the roots of modern India's scientific journey is from the days of great visionary leader Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. It can be traced back to the establishment of Indian National Committee for Space Research in 1962, that is INCOSPAR. That was INCOSPAR. is subsequently renamed as ISRO in the year 1969. ISRO steadily evolved from its modest beginning achieving a series of milestones that illuminated the nature scientific landscape. Madam, on October 22nd, 2008, India's first lunar probe was launched by ISRO. It carried 11 scientific instruments to study the moon's surface, mineral composition, and the presence of water molecule. The result was the discovery of water molecules on the lunar surface, indicating the possibility of water ice in polar regions. Further, it identified the presence of magnesium, aluminium, silicon, iron, and titanium on the moon. And Chandrayaan 2, I am not going to the details. Madam, coming to Chandrayaan 3, a testament to ISRO's dedication to exploring new frontiers. The lunar lander Vikram consists of three parts, lander, rover, and the popular mode, sorry, propulsion module, which provide the safe spacecraft to transverse 3,84,400 kilometers wide between the moon and the earth. Thereby, India has become the fourth nation to achieve this after U.S., Russia, and China. Chandrayaan mission placed cemented India's global status as a superpower in the space. ISRO's accomplishment demonstrate how investment in scientific research can yield both knowledge and technological advancements with far-reaching impacts. What are the impacts of the mission? Madam, four main impacts. Number one is the health care. Number two, the climate change mitigation. And number three, the security. And number four, one is the national well-being. So, Madam, the fusion of science and technology has catalyzed the transformative revolution of the health care like telemedicine and bringing the service of the expert healthcare professionals even to the remotest part of our country. In the, in the, in the area of climate change, India's strategic alignment of science and technology assumes paramount importance. And that too in the case of sustainable development adopted by the UN resolution in the year 2015. And we, we are commitment to honor them. We are we have to honor the commitments made in the UN as far as the sustainable development is concerned. Madam, national security demands a multi-faced approach rooted in innovation. So, so Madam, the rim of science and technology is intricately linked to its educational ecosystem and its ability to nurture a culture of curiosity, learning and innovation. 
India's educational institutions and research centers plays a pivotal role in cultivating a skilled workforce and fostering a spirit of inquiry. Initiatives that promote STEM, that is science, technology, engineering and mathematics, have the potential to propel India further on its scientific journey for which I urge maximum budget allocation has to be provided in the field of research and innovation. The present budget allocation is not sufficient to meet the purpose. And one more suggestion I would like to make, as far as the private sector is concerned, what is the amount being spent for research and innovation and development in the field of research and innovation, which is negligible amount being spent by the private sectors, it is everything is from the public sector. Definitely, once again, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate the scientific community but in particular, the ISRO and also the college from whom most of the most of the members have already pointed out most of the most of this engineering faculty is from the aided colleges or the government colleges. So once again, I take to congratulate and salute all the scientific community, in particular ISRO. Thank you very much, ma'am. Sri Thomas ji.